cold at the touch, dead in the eyes, no signs of life, no more, I put your love under the knife, leave me to die, here all alone, no signs of life, no more, no, a crying dove may never fly. are designed to grow and adapt to different physiological stressors. In humans, for example, changes can be seen in the body over time through resistance training. When we place an outside stimulus on our bones and musculature, our system changes so to further withstand greater forces. Bones increase in density, muscles grow, and the brain stems new connections to improve our ability to resist force. These adaptations begin as soon as a new stimulus is applied to the body, so to allow us to perform the required action with less difficulty. This change can be explained through the said principle, which is defined as the specific adaptations to impose demands. The said principle can be applied through focus and structure training that breaks programs into cycles. Weekly programs are called microcycles, since they are the smallest component of a training block. Microcycles are generally structured according to objectives, targeted in that phase of training, and they focus on specific volumes and intensities. While these weekly programs can be planned and prepared weeks or even months in advance, Life happens, and factors such as injury, illness, or burnout, which is when an athlete grows bored or loses interest in training due to the different stresses they experience, need to be accounted for. In turn, coaches should be able to modify a program based on the needs of the athlete to ensure that training objectives for that week are still achieved. The next component of a program is called a mesocycle, which can be anywhere from two weeks to two months depending on the training focus. Mesocycles are often broken down based on energy systems, such as if the coach or trainer wants to develop an athlete's alactic anaerobic system, which is also known as power and explosiveness, or if they want to develop the aerobic system, which on the other hand is endurance training. This is where a program really shows its focus, since the length of a cycle is determined mostly by the significance it plays in an individual's preparation for competition. For example, you wouldn't have a 100 meter sprinter performing 10 or 15 kilometer runs a month prior to Olympic qualifiers. The same way you wouldn't have a cyclist who is preparing for the Tour de France training to hit a one rep max in the squat a week out from competition. Not to say that there isn't a time or place in any athlete's training program for this type of work, but these factors need to be implemented at the appropriate time for the appropriate duration in order to properly prepare them for the competitive season. When working with individuals recovering from an injury, or those from the general population, mesocycles can be implemented through variations in exercise difficulty or body part. The final and largest component of a training program is a macrocycle, or a yearly training program. A macrocycle or a yearly training program is comprised of a full year's worth of mesocycles and microcycles, which all fit together like a puzzle. Generally, a macrocycle is laid out and planned according to when an individual is planning on competing in a major competition. Nevertheless, the same principles can be applied if an individual is looking to go down south, or if you're working with a client who's recovering from an injury. Since there is an end point that the coach or trainer can plan towards, macrocycles are generally designed so that an athlete peaks for a major event. This is where macrocycle duration is determined. If a coach or trainer is looking to periodize an athlete's training so to peak, it's important to understand how long each aspect of training should be emphasized, and when in the yearly training program, the focus of the program should shift from general fitness to specific task performance training. Going back to what I said previously about the sprinter and the cyclist, they may focus on other aspects of training that isn't important or sport specific while in the general training phase, since it's important for all athletes to have a strong base foundation when it comes to their general overall fitness. Nonetheless, 
Planning and preparation is important to the peaking process, so to optimize all aspects of an athlete's athletic potential. When moving out of the general preparatory phase and into a competition phase, coaches often implement a taper into the program. A taper is a complex process whereby the coach begins to alter an athlete's training volume and intensity to deload in the final weeks of training prior to competition. While much of the information from this video comes from the book Periodization, Theory and Methodology of Training, this information is based on thousands of research articles and studies regarding the effects of periodization training on athletic performance. Nevertheless, for anyone interested in some additional reading, and if you want to look a little further into the topic, I'll reference a few specific articles that I've used in the past in the description box. Any further questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe.